We are rolling through the program, and I hope all of you are having fantastic Fridays. And we close out Friday as we do every single Friday during the course of the NFL season with the OutKick six-pack of gambling picks. Now, as the music comes up in the background there, I want to thank Montel Jordan to start, but now the money-making cash sound in the background here. Truth of the matter is, we had a bad we had a bad week last week. I think we went one in five, which is uh, which is tough. That still means that we are doing well. I think 26 and 17 overall, if I'm doing the math correctly, on the OutKick six-pack, even after a disastrous week last week. So it's time to get back on the winning track here. And here we go. Is Dub there? Can we? Is Dub ready to analyze these picks? I'm ready to roll. They just did a mic check and sang a beautiful national anthem out here. At there you Team go. Track. So we're ready. America, America. There we go. Seattle at Buffalo. I've got the over 55. I said this is the game I'm most intrigued to watch. Maybe I should have said that I was most intrigued to watch Brady versus uh, Breeze for potentially the last time, although I feel like Brady's never going to retire now. He may play until he's 50. Seattle at Buffalo, I've got the over 55 in this game. Buffalo's defense has been questionable this year. The Seahawks have no defense. I think both teams will score uh, quite a bit, see a lot of points being uh, laid here. I'm going over your thoughts, Dub. The only thing that concerns me here is the Buffalo offense, which started off so hot. I know. But I think they get back on track against the Seattle defense, like you said, which is non-existent. So you're on this team uh, I, with me. I agree. Uh, the Ravens are going on the road against the Indianapolis Colts. It's a big game for both teams. I, I'm just not sold on the Ravens. This is a good defense they're going up against in the Colts. When the Ravens have tended to play really good teams – uh, both the Chiefs and also the, the the Steelers they have lost. I don't like the mojo. I don't like the momentum of the Ravens. I like Indy plus three in this game against the Ravens. Yeah, this is one of my favorite plays here. The Ravens, second worst passing yards per game this season so far. I think Indy shuts down the ground game and forces Lamar to pass, and I like Indy in that situation. We talked earlier with Shannon Spake, who's going to be on the road in D.C. covering the Giants at Washington. I think the under is the play here. Uh, I don't feel good about the Giants coming off that Monday night game. Short week for them. Devastating loss. Washington has a very good defense. I think that the Giants go on the road and the under 43 hits in this game. I don't know how you're betting unders after last night, Clay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, last night was brutal if you had the under like I did in the in the Packer game on the road against the 49ers. The score with four seconds left. But I'm sticking with the under here in the Giants-Washington game. I like it. Uh, This one, everybody is on. I mean, I think like 99% of the bets are on it, and it makes me nervous. But the Steelers going on the road against the Cowboys, Steelers are right at 13.5-point favorites. I just – I don't see how the Cowboys are going to be able to score. I really don't. And so I think there's an argument for the under here. But I see this game being like 24-6 to and the Steelers just shutting down everything the Cowboys do, even after coming off two big wins in a row on the road against the Titans and on the road against uh, the Ravens. I think the Steelers just suffocate this uh, Dallas Cowboy offense. I like the Steelers to cover a big number. Well, Clay, I like pain, and I'm taking the Cowboys here. 0 and 9 against the spread has never happened, as you mentioned. Never in the early history in the of the NFL. Right now, the Cowboys are 0 and 8 against the spread. They are trying to make history. Yeah, and then also Mike Tomlin on the road as a big favorite over 10 points, 2 and 9 against the spread during his time with the Steelers. So those are good enough for me. I'm taking the Cowboys. I'm getting those two touchdowns. I am nervous about uh, how many different people are on the uh, the Steelers in this scenario, but I think ultimately. I just I can't see the Cowboys scoring. I, I just can't see it. And I think they're going to turn the ball over. I can see the Steelers defense scoring. I can't bet on them. Saints, big game. Saints plus five at the Bucks. The Saints have already beaten the Bucks to start week one of the NFL season. I think the Saints come back and win again, potentially against the Bucks. But even if they don't win with Michael Thomas back and everything else, I think they're going to cover the five. 
And so I think five is just too many points, too good a value here on the Saints. Yeah, I agree. I think the Saints can win this game. So if you're going to give me five points, I'm going to take them and run with it. So I think the Saints is the only play to even have here. I think it's Saints or pass, to be honest with you. All right, and here's the final pick. I'm going to be at this game, which is why I saved it for last. I've been kind of wavering back and forth on the Bears at the Titans. But ultimately, I just I, the Bears' offense, I can't bet on right now. And I feel like the Titans are going to have – a decent amount of success. So I am taking the Titans minus six and a half against the Bears. Yeah, this is a matchup between two major weaknesses, but with the Bears offense going up against the Titans defense, which yeah. one is worse? Yeah. That's the question here. If you think the Titans offense or defense is worse than the Bears offense, that's going to kind of dictate where you go. I, I think I agree. I think I like the Titans here to come out and uh, – bounce back after a couple of bad performances titans in theory are going to have a remade secondary for this game they released vic beasley in one of the great one of the all-time worst free agent signings the titans <laughs> gave him nine and a half million dollars he made three sacks he played seven games they released him nobody picked him up i mean it seems like vic beasley's career is effectively over the titans also released jonathan joseph who was an aging defensive back that got picked apart quite a bit by the Bengals in that unexpected loss for the Titans they obviously made the trade with the Chargers to go grab Desmond King theoretically he's going to be able to play in this game and the expectation is that a Dory Jackson is going to be back so that would help out the secondary quite a bit even if they might have some communication issues they've at least got some talent uh, so I think the Titans find a way to get it done beat the Bears. I don't like the vibe coming out of Chicago right now. Seems like there is a, a lot of dissension in the ranks over who the quarterback's going to be. Mitch Trubisky is injured, but I just don't believe in Nick Foles. They're not protecting him very well. Maybe the Titans, even the Titans can get pressure on Nick Foles, but if they can't, I just don't like the playmakers on the offensive side of the ball for the Bears. So I like the Titans to find a way. So to recap, Seattle at Buffalo, I've got the over 55 Ravens at Indianapolis plus three Bears and the Titans the Titans minus six and a half uh, Washington uh, hosting the Giants the under 43 the Steelers minus 13 and a half at the Cowboys and the Saints plus five at the Bucks. 